Karl Marx, born in 1818 in Trier in the Kingdom of Prussia, to a father who was a civil servant to the Prussian government. Marx had a formal education and received his doctorate in 1841. As a student, he struggled with broken promises of Frederick William IV, and his disenlightened rule drove Marx to develop his ideas. Moses Hess appointed Marx as editor of his journal while acting as a sounding board for Marx's views of the Prussian government. Although Marx studied the works of Hegel, he opposed the spiritual side of his teachings, the dialectic portion of Hoganism which focused on the thesis and antithesis, better known as partial truth and contradiction, were more well received by Marx. He then spun this immaterial world, later known as dialectic materialism. After Hess's journal was shut down in 1843, Marx moved with his wife to Paris. Notions and theories of Claude Henry Comte de Saint-Simon and others were analyzed by Marx. Specifically, the idea of sharing society for the betterment of all presented by Pierre-Joseph Proudhon. Proudhon's What is Property shaped Marx's view and further his notion of capitalism as it existed with The ends justify the means was a view that Mikhail Balkin believed that would be sufficient for a revolution of the working class. Marx was inspired by the European revolutions in 1848 that occurred in Italy, France, German states, Austria, Denmark, Belgium, Ireland, and other portions of the continent. These events led Marx and his colleague Frederick Engels to write the Communist Manifesto. From nomads to slave societies to feudal systems and now capitalism, in each scenario the antithesis party overcame the thesis. The repetition is something that Marx hoped to eliminate and he determined that the rising up of worker or laboring class would allow for an overthrow of capitalism, leading to a communistic society that would promote an equal share or classless world. Marx and Engels wanted capitalism to fall as the existence of commodities promoted a use value, and no use value was greater than that of labor. The exponential profits were not seen by the laborers but the higher classes, thus Marx wanted the proletarians to rise up and take control. The irony behind this movement was that some of the capitalists were once the proletarian party in the former feudal system. Only the workers could be the revolution. This led to the future of the communist revolution. The capitalistic schools indoctrinated the youth on the nationalistic message. Following the February and October revolutions in Russia, Tsar Nicholas II would be ousted, leaving the seat of power open to Vladimir Lenin. Lenin was a revolutionist who rooted his views in Marxism and would later be succeeded by Joseph Stalin. The Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics would rise to power with its capital based in Moscow. Education was possible for all and jobs were available after education had been complete. The proletarian revolution allowed for the working class to capture the government, establish a dictatorship, eliminate capitalism, and emerge as a classless society that crushed the old nationalistic views. This was accomplished, thus upholding Marx's revolutionist ideas. The removal of nationalism from the education system was needed to maintain a classless society. Teachers would be for the proletariat, and the school would need to remain in control of the government. This led to a 1949 Chinese Communist Revolution, where Mao Zedong would take control as chairman, and his Marxist-Leninist theories would be installed in the People's Republic of China. Thomas Malthus serves as an inspiration for Charles Darwin. The powerful quote that has outlived Malthus himself states as follows, The power of population is indefinitely greater than the power of the earth to produce subsistence for man. Malthus predicted that the need would outgrow supply. While this is not exactly survival of the fittest, this comment did help shape Darwin and his visions. Charles Darwin was born in 1809 in England. He had a rich educational background that managed to detour multiple times. At the age of 16, he began his journey to follow in his father's footsteps at Edinburgh University and become a physician. Darwin took more interest in his informal education and decided to leave medical school. He then went to Christ College at Cambridge, where he graduated in 1831. That same year, Darwin would board the HMS Beagle as an unpaid naturalist that would map the geological formations and collect biological samples from South America. Along the voyage, the Beagles spent some time at the Galapagos Islands where Darwin would make some forever changing observations. The iguanas here foraged on algae and seaweed that were black like the lava rock beaches and while their sustenance for life was in the ocean, they were still most comfortable on land. The finches on each island were varying slightly from one another, their beaks took peculiar shapes as what seemed to be based upon their food source. Darwin would transform his findings into a theory of natural selection or evolution, which progressed through a slow process of progression that would allow species to differentiate over time as dictated by nature. This was the process of natural selection. Many theories for society and education were based upon Darwin's biological findings. Thomas Huxley, also known as Darwin's Bulldog, became an advocate for Darwin's publications and theories for education of the common man in England. Huxley wrote On Our Knowledge, The Cause of the Phenomenon of Organic Nature, as well as other books to explain the evolutionary ideas to the common man. 
His efforts helped pave the way for science education and make knowledge about science more attainable for society. Survival of the fittest, while often attributed to Darwin, was actually a quote from Herbert Spencer. He believed in capitalism and is largely the antithesis to Karl Marx. Not unlike Marx and Darwin, Spencer's views usually contradicted the status quo. Spencer largely influenced education and believed direct and indirect self-preservation, rearing of children, socio-political preservation, and the enjoyment of life were needed to survive or to be the fittest for society. Spencer believed education should be experience-centered and not relying on books. Others, such as William Graham Sumner, interpreted Darwin's definition of evolution for the context of sociology, believing that social change evolves slowly just like species do in nature, and is not due to one particular deliberate action. Darwin and Marx were of the same time and created changes that the world can never undo. Their theories were impactful in society and education. Marx was an admirer of Darwin and the two exchanged multiple letters. Marx not only accepted Darwin's views but compared them to his own, with the exception of Malthus's influence on Darwin, as Marx objected his views. The Communist Manifesto was published in 1848, a year prior to Darwin's publication on the origin of species. While Darwin's work was unknown to Marx at the time of the Manifesto, he had read Origin many times prior to writing Das Kapital. Marx and Darwin's relationship can only be speculated upon, and it seems that Marx wanted to dedicate an English language volume of Das Kapital to Darwin. Although Marx was inspired by the idea of natural selection, he despised its use in society and no longer made direct comparisons, instead parallels between the two. While it's known Darwin's scientific theories influenced Herbert Spencer's social Darwinism by the name alone, it is through the uncovering these letters between Marx and Darwin that allows one to conclude the impact that it had on Marxism in one of his final works, Das Kapital. Where there is the societal concerns of social Darwinism, or the teaching of evolution in the classroom, theories introduced by Charles Darwin and Herbert Spencer will continue to affect our ethical concerns in education and life in general. The battle will continue to evolve.